Hello everybody, Chubby Meeple here to do an unboxing video, or at least attempt one. For a new Kickstarter game I just received today, this is Raving Spire, uh, created by Corey Scanlon, Joshua Carlson, and published by Vorpal Chainsword Games. This is a deck building game with a rotating dungeon board uh, for one to six players. So I'm going to attempt to do a little bit of an unboxing video here, um, just filming with an iPhone, so we'll see how this works. Uh, so first step here is to rip the uh, plastic on this and let's see what we've got inside. All right, so we've got the plastic off of here. Now this is going to be a little bit of an interesting unboxing video because since I am using my iPhone to video this, um, I don't have a mount or anything like that, so it's going to be all handheld. So we're going to be seeing some stops and starts as uh, I open whatever's in this box, if there's packaging or cards that need to be unwrapped. So uh, bear with me. Hopefully it's bearable here and uh, you still find this to be entertaining, uh, if not pieced together. So let's open this thing up and see what we've got on the inside here. So... We open up Raving Spire. Looks like we've got a, a nice rule book here. Overhead lighting, gotta love it. Uh, so obviously have not played this, don't know how it works, but we've got our pretty nice illustrated rule book here. Uh, looks pretty cool. We'll check that out in a little bit. Uh, we'll a little silica gel packs, we can toss those out. Uh, we do have a D6. Looks like some boxes up there for probably some cards, some tokens. Deluxe Edition 4-pack. This is uh, some expansions. Uh, so you've got um, some scenario packs. There's an Old West scenario, a steampunk airship, uh, the Vengeance of the Goblin Queen, as well as the Vorpal Chainsword. So this is a Kickstarter uh, backer exclusive pack that comes in here. We'll open that up in just a second so we've got. So the, the, the piece de resistance, if you will, here. This is the uh, rotating game board, so you can see it rotates pretty freely here uh, on all, all three levels. It's a three-level game board here, so basically a dungeon, and ideally you're going to be lining up um, the doorways here uh, in order to move into the next ring and get into the center. So we'll take a look at that a little bit more in depth, so we'll move that out of the way here. Looks like we've got some player boards down in here. so. Uh, some player boards, some encounter boards uh, that are in the game here. This is Darius the Blade. So, we've got Darius Garson Cinderheart. Pretty interesting. Marcus the Rune Lord. So, you see, we got some different character cards here. Florence Haymaker. So, that's uh, pretty awesome as well. We've got Quinn at Blanc. Is there? Looks like we have the Crimson Reaver. Some of these were unlocked as stretch goals during the Kickstarter. Some of these characters that you can play as. Uh, we've got uh, Dawn the Righteous. That is here. Let's move this silica gel pack out of the way. I do appreciate them having that in there, though. Shayla Nimble Nook. Very cool. And it looks like the last player board in here is going to be Aurora the All-Knowing. So then under that, we have some more player boards here. Some temple cards, uh, if I remember correctly from some of the videos, you got a temple ring, a, so this is the uh, temple ring, there's a dungeon ring in here, a spire ring, and then you uh, have obviously the box bottom. Looks like we got some punch out chits, as well as some cards in here, we'll open this pack up and take a closer look as well. And then we've got some boxes up here, which uh, I'm excited to see what those are. So uh, I'm going to stop this here for a second, bust open some of these packages so we can dive in a little bit further. All right, so the first thing I opened here is the uh, sealed package that had the chits. Uh, there were some cards in the back of that. We'll take a look here. Uh, so you've got some uh, chits here that will get punched out. These are basically your tokens. Uh, this particular board is the Nine Heroes. Uh, that you'll get to select and play as one of those heroes. So you have your hero token that will basically represent your position uh, within the rotating dungeon. Uh, this also has uh, some foe tokens on it uh, that are going to be used to label where your foes are uh, inside the dungeon. Uh, and then your foe cards will get slotted on the foe board that we saw earlier. The other chip board here uh, contains some sanity tokens. Uh, as well as a madness token, and uh, I'm assuming these keys here are probably objective tokens of some kind uh, for that. So that's just a, an, an assumption on my part here. Uh, also in that package, we had the 
hero cards here. So these are the uh, heroes that you can play at. These will be slotted on your board. So for example, we have Aurora the All-Knowing here on the board. Her character card will slot in here uh, once everything is set up. So you'll have her character card with her abilities on here. Uh, got some really, once I get this to focus, got some really nice artwork. Uh, she's a Chronomancer, which sounds very interesting. Four fight, four skill, eight charm points. Uh, I'm assuming those are possibly starting cards that she gets. Uh, we'll see here how this works. Um, obviously, I haven't gone through the rule book yet because I just opened this thing up. So uh, we'll be looking for a future review, possibly video or a blog post. One of the two. We'll see uh, what this lends itself to. So, uh, so you have all your starting cards here. You've got some faux cards as well uh, in here. The Blue Baron, the Crimson Reaver. There's Florence Haymaker that is in there, Cinderheart, Marcus the Rune Lord, Shayla Nimble Nook. So these are all your hero cards uh, that are in here. Some of them are foes as well. So there's the Red Reaver um, who is listed as a foe. One of the other things that I didn't realize this when I was looking through and, and I don't remember it anyway from the Kickstarter is also included that in that pack are these sealed envelopes. Uh, they're sealed spire cards, so uh, these must play into uh, the game itself uh, when you get to the spire. Um, you open these up, so a little bit of a, I don't really want to say a legacy component to it, um, but uh, kind of adding to the story, which could be very cool. So they're kind of sealed up, so you don't know really what you're getting into until you get into it. So that's going to be some fun uh, to uncover some secrets. Now what's interesting about this is I was thumbing through the rule book when I had taken the brief pause. Uh, the rule book mentioned that there were five sealed cards in here. Uh, five sealed cards included with the game, but uh, or at least that's what the component list says. However, I have ten, so some of those probably come as a result of some of the, kick the Kickstarter stretch goals, and I don't know, maybe they're even part of the uh, Kickstarter expansion, which will be one of the next things we open up and take a look at. All right, so the next thing I do, I want to save the Kickstarter Deluxe uh, Edition 4-pack thing uh, for last. So we're still looking inside the box here. I'm going to try and open up these little envelopes and see what these are. Um, I'm assuming these are your item cards, probably some faux cards that you'll fight as you go through. We'll see if I can do this one-handed and take a look at what's inside. So uh, you guys are seeing this as I'm seeing it for the first time. So we'll see how well I can actually explain it. Uh, so you've got some cards here. Looks like some Explore cards. Uh, so we've got some, it says may use once per turn. You've got some scrawled maps. Uh, looks like you can exert yourself as well. So there's some different, different types of cards that are in here. Uh, Wicked Caverns, Relics Cost, More One Charm. So uh, you've got some different different adventure cards that are listed in here. There's a uh, Dragon Hatchery, Temple of the Serpent. So these will be interesting to see uh, how these come into play in the game. Uh, these are your nine tower cards, and it looks again like there might be more than nine there. Uh, again, Kickstarter rewards, Kickstarter stretch goals, always fun. We'll come up here, we'll grab the next smallest one on the list, and this one might be a little trickier to get open. Yeah, maybe not. We'll see here. So let's see what I can do with this, with the uh, phone being held in one hand. I may end up dumping these out and making a nice mess, so we'll see what happens. All right. So we've got some cards dumped out of there. Uh, these are likely item cards, uh, different treasure cards. Yeah. So we have an ineffective blade that is on here. So it's an object that can be played immediately. You roll a die and depending on your die roll will determine uh, what happens and what that ineffective blade does for you. Let's see if we can drop some other cards down here and see what we can end up with. Let's pull this out here. There's a gunslinger's bullet, another object. So you play with your gunslinger adventurer in the same turn you can instantly defeat an adversary or foe. And then this card gets removed from the game. So a lot of items to be found as you go through. Now before I try and open these other two boxes up here, because they are larger boxes, I'm going to uh, stop the video here, pop those open, and we'll see what's in those. Alright, so I open up these other two larger boxes. Uh, this box here had all of these starter cards, or what looked to be the starter cards according to the rule book. 
Uh, so one skill point, one charm point, one fight point uh, that can be used over the course of the game. Again, we'll know more when I actually read this rule book, but I wanted to get some unboxing of the components because this is an absolutely gorgeous uh, box. Uh, I love this deluxe edition wood. Uh, the the one thing I didn't point out uh, on here, and I don't know if you can see it with the glare, uh, you do have um, metal on this because this board is a uh, magnetic closure. Uh, it's a wooden box, fully wooden, uh, with a magnetic closure. Uh, your next stack of cards here, uh, you've got your kind of your player reference cards, so your turn order, moving and drawing, your encounter, doing your explore, recovering a bit. Uh, and then your your foe, uh, but this also has some other cards in here. Uh, so you've got some maybe some adventurers you can encounter, uh, some weapons you can find. There's some different event cards that are in here. Uh, and this stack that here is just a small smattering, as you can see. There are still quite a few still in the bigger box there. Um, I really like the fact that these cards have tuck boxes, so uh, it'll help keep things organized uh, when storing the game. Uh, since it is designed the way it is to kind of stand up like a book, uh, it'll be really nice to kind of keep everything uh, you know in one place on the shelf. Uh, that are there. Uh, so um, those are the cards. Those are uh, kind of the base game components. Uh, I'm going to crack open the deluxe Kickstarter, uh, this deluxe Kickstarter edition pack here uh, that has some expansions in it, and let's see what we have in there. All right, so we got the Kickstarter exclusive package open. Uh, it was a smattering of cards, uh, some larger, uh, I'm assuming more uh, like Big Bad uh, foes that you're going to be fighting maybe in the center of the spire. Again, I don't know. I haven't read the rule book yet. We will see uh, how these all come into play. What's going to be really interesting was in that package we had these larger cards with like the Goblin Queen, the Gunslinger. Uh, you have this new rogue character uh, that's popped in here. Uh, he's probably for the steampunk. Uh, I'm going to guess he's a steampunk uh, airship guy. You got a Rune Lord, a rogue. Some new characters that are in here. Uh, that are in there. So you have those cards, but then we have this stack of cards as well, which is a mixture of foes and items and loot cards, some more tower cards um, that are there uh, in, into the game. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how these all get sorted out and exactly, you know, how I'm going to know what goes with which uh, expansion and with which scenario. But I'll figure all of that out uh, from there. Uh, before I wrap this, this video up here, uh, I am going to set the board up uh, based on a picture that I see in the rule book just so you can kind of see how it all sets up. Okay, so this is a setup of the board. I haven't put any cards or anything out, uh, but this is basically what the board will look like as you play. Now, this is a single player setup, uh, so you'll notice we have our faux board down here. So, this is where the faux cards are going, are going to be. Uh, you'll have spaces for tower decks, there's a loot deck that goes on here. Uh, there is a banish pile as well, and then you have your encounter deck uh, that will be drawn as the game goes on. You have something here called the Well of Souls uh, that will be used throughout the course of the game. Uh, there are explore cards and turn order information on the, on the board already. This track of red numbers here, if I can get the glare off the board for you, this is your madness track. Uh, so there are things that are going to cause madness to creep in uh, as well. Um, I doubt it has anything to do with Lovecraft, but it is kind of funny. Uh, the, the, they call it Madness versus Sanity, uh, so we'll talk about the Sanity in a second. With the Madness track, you'll set your Madness token um, on a number that equals uh, 2 plus the number of players. So in the single player setup, we'd set the Madness token on 3. Um, and I'm assuming we don't want that to get down to this skull or something bad happens. And then you're going to have your foe pile here, uh, where we'll have our, our deck of foes that will be coming out that will be fighting over the course of the game. When we look at the player mat here, and I'll go into more detail when I actually do a walkthrough um, of this, uh, either a walkthrough video uh, or definitely a review uh, on the blog. Uh, so you have your, uh, very similar to the foe deck here, you've got your battle deck, you've got your discard pile, there's a dungeon slot here. There are various equipment slots here that let you slot things like weapons and ob objects, possibly some magical items. Your hero card will go here. We saw the hero cards earlier. And then you have a sanity tracker here. Uh, and your sanity track uh, on there actually starts at the highest up here at 10 uh, with that. So uh, there's that. You then have your, uh, your temple, your dungeon, 
Over here is your dungeon and your spire boards, so you can keep track of the foes that come out. Uh, my understanding is as foes come out, they get slotted in these positions here, so you know who you have to fight while your character is in the temple ring, which of course again rotates. You've got your dungeon ring that rotates, and you've got your spire ring that rotates as well. I'm sorry, that's backwards. Dungeon, temple, spire um, that are there. Uh, so that's very cool. You also will start, according to the rules, it looks like one of the tower cards goes here on the dungeon slot uh, here in the on the dungeon, and I, this will set up kind of a condition for the game, uh, it appears. So uh, look forward to showing you guys more of this, uh, either again through a walkthrough video, uh, review video, uh, both, or doing just a simple um, text and picture uh, review on the blog. So definitely stay tuned. I'm the Chubby Meeple, saying peace out.